I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we are going to discuss about invariant points and invariant lines. We'll continue with the concept of matrices. transformation so whenever you have a transformation whether it is a rotation reflection translation there are some points which do not move so those are called the invariant points so we'll talk about an invariant point a line of invariant points point on invariant line. Now, these two things are slightly different as in the second one the line is not moving at all. All the points are stationary on that line but in the third case which is points on invariant line means points move but they move to corresponding positions on the line itself. So the line remains the same however the points move on that line. After understanding this concept, we will take four questions. Three of them are visible to you. Uh, so, we will consider R2 and R3. And then we will take the fourth question, which will address the last point, which is points on invariant line. You can actually pause the video, copy these questions, try them out, and then look into my suggestions. So, let's begin with the very first concept, and that is an invariant point. So whenever we say invariant point means points that do not change their position due to transformation. Perfect. So, so whenever we are having a transformation matrix, let's say we have a transformation matrix uh, A, B, C, D. And if it is applied to a point X, Y, and if the point remains X, Y, that means normally it will be X1, Y1. So, so whenever you do a transformation, we get this image. So you will notice that sometimes, so if and only if x is equal to x1 and y equals to y1, then we have invariant point. Right. So that's the whole idea. Now, Looking into this, you will notice that if x and y are 0, then origin is always invariant point. So, so if I have uh, both 0, right? Well, notice that 0, 0 is invariant. So if I replace this with 0 here, then whatever is this matrix will get an invariant point. Perfect. So that is the case when we're talking about invariant point. Normally, you'll find under such transformations, origin is an invariant point. Now, the second concept is a line of invariant points. So when we are considering line of invariant points, what we mean here is that if I have points on the x-axis, let's say these are different points on the x-axis, right? And the transformation is reflection on the x-axis, right? So in that case, you find that all the points whose coordinate points are x0 are invariant. 
is that clear to you? So these points do not move, right? They are reflection on the x-axis. They are on the line about which you are reflecting, right? So they do not move. So they are invariant points. Now let's look into the third case where we are trying to say that points on invariant line. Now, if you consider a reflection, let me write it this. If you consider a reflection about y axis, right, in that case, what happens? Now, any horizontal line, for example, here any horizontal line, the points on this side will get reflected on the other side, right? So all the points on this side will get reflected on the other side. So they are reflected on the same line, right? And the points on the other side in quadrant 1 will actually get reflected on the points which will be in quadrant 2. So in a way, what you notice is that the line is invariant, right? So, so in this case, we'll say horizontal line is invariant. Does it make sense to you, right? So, so it's very clear from here that we'll have three types of examples. One, we will consider the points which are not moving due to any kind of transformation. We'll also take example with R3, a line where all the points are exactly same as we saw here for the x-axis, reflection on the x-axis itself. And then if you're reflecting on the y-axis, we see any horizontal line all the points reflect on corresponding points on the line. So they are reflected on the line. And therefore, we have the same line. So the line is invariant. However, points position change, right? So important thing is points position change. But the line is invariant. Do you get the idea, right? So Let's have examples to understand how to work out these things. Question number one here is, find the invariant points of the transformation with matrix 1, 2, 0, minus 1 and 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So, so let's do uh, question 1A first. So we have a matrix which is... Uh, Let's call this matrix M, which is given to us as 1, 2, 0, minus 1. And we need to find invariant points. So, so let's apply the transformation of this matrix on a point X, Y in general. So in this case, what do we get? We get, uh, let's do this multiplication, right? So what you need to know or re remember is how to multiply Right, so, so let's multiply and write down the resultant image. 1 times x is x plus 2 times y, so we get 2y here. 0 times x is 0 minus y. Perfect. Now, we want invariant points. It means that the positions are same. So we get two equations from here. One is x equals to x plus 2y. And we get y equals to minus y. Correct? So we get these two equations. And we now have to find points which satisfy both the equations. Right? So we need to find points which satisfy both these equations. So I hope till now the concept is clear. Now we know y equals to minus y is possible when y is equal to 0. Perfect. 
that is the only point where y and minus y will be having the same value, right? The y value has to be 0. Now, the second condition is that x is equal to x plus 2y. Substituting 0 here on y, since we have this equation, what do we get? We get x equals to x. That gives us the set of points. So all the points which are of the form x0 are invariant. So basically, we get infinite number of points because x could be any value. So basically, what we are trying to say here is all points on the x-axis is that creative, right? So all points on the x-axis. So basically, in this particular case, what we found is basically a line which is y equals to 0 or x-axis. Correct. So we got, in this case, the solution is infinite number of points. Do you see that? So sometimes you may get answer as infinite number of points. That will mean a line, right? Let's take the next example, part B now. Part B is a similar example, and therefore, I'm going to change this a bit, right? So, so you try this. Try it yourself. We'll do part C. I'm just adding one more example to give you a variation on this particular case, right? So, let's have a matrix, which is 3, 2, let's say 1, 0. And we'll work on this particular matrix. So I'm now solving uh, question number 1C. So the matrix is now changed to 3, 2, 0, 1. We need to find the invariant points of the matrix transformation with this matrix, correct? So basically, we are saying that this matrix M, when the transformation is applied in general to any point, should be equal to what? So the matrix is given to us as 3, 2, 0, 1. And we are applying this on any point in R2. So what we get here is 3x plus 2y. And here we get uh, 0 plus y or just y. Correct. So here from this we get two different equations. One of the equations is 3x plus 2y equals to 0. The other equation is y equals to 0. So y equals to 0, when you substitute this in equation 1, what do you get? So when you substitute this here, you get 3x equals to 0. Now 3x is 0 only when x is 0. And therefore, the invariant point is zero zero and that is origin is that clear to you so in this particular case we get a particular point which is invariant perfect now let's take the second example show that origin zero zero is invariant point for any transformation matrix well this we did earlier so if i do let us take a transformation matrix as A, B, C, D. In that case, if I apply this transformation to any point X, Y, and in this case, we have X, Y as equal to origin, then what do we get? We get A, B, C, D on this transformation on 0, 0, the result is 0, 0, right? Therefore, origin is an invariant point. Clear.
question number three. This time we have taken up a point in R3. The question here is, find all the invariant points of the transformation represented by the matrix A, which is given to you. So when we talk about R3, we'll take x, y, z, right? So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. And let's do this transformation. So what we get here is x, and here you get y, and here you get minus z. So that results into three different equations. The equations are x equals to x, y equals to y, and z equals to z. Now, the last statement, z equals to z, is always true, sorry, minus z, when z equals to zero, perfect. And therefore, what we get is the points which are invariant are x, y, 0. So these are the set of points. So these are set of invariant points. Now in this particular case, the set x, y, 0 represents x, y plane, right? Do you see that? So in this case, x, y, 0, all the points on the x, y plane are invariant due to the given transformation matrix A. Perfect. So that is how we are going to solve this particular type of question. Now here is the last example where the question here is, find the invariant lines of the transformation represented by the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. I would like you to pause the video, try it out, and then look into my suggestions. Question number four is slightly different from the previous three questions. The question is, find the invariant lines of the transformation represented by the given matrix. So we are now interested in finding equation of invariant lines, not points. Okay? So when we say invariant lines, we'll take general equation y equals to mx plus b. Now let's write this equation in parametric form. Working with matrix, we normally work with parametric form. So, so if we say that the, the x value is t, in that case, y will be mt plus p. Right. We are given the matrix, let's call this matrix m as 0, 1, 1, 0. Perfect. Now, Invariant means the points will not change, correct? So let's apply the transformation to the given matrix. Then what we get here is 0, 1, 1, 0. The x value is t, y value is mt plus b. So you get here. 0 times t is 0, 1 times mt plus p will give you mt plus p. And here we get t. Now for an invariant line, what will be the condition? Well, the x value should be equal to mt plus b and the y value should be equal to t. Correct? So that becomes the condition in this particular case. Now, if y is t, then the equation can be written as what? Well, let's rearrange t from here. So we get x minus b equals to mt, or x minus b over m, is t. And therefore, we can now write 
y as equal to x over m minus b over m. So we get the equation as y equals to x over m minus b over m. So that becomes the equation of the invariant line. Now to solve this particular equation, we'll figure out what could be the value of m and what could be the value of p. Now if you compare this with your equation y equals to mx plus b. In that case, we get a condition that m should be equal to 1 over m, right? So that implies that m equals to 1 over m, correct? Or m square equals to 1, and that means m is equal to plus and minus 1. So m could have two values. It could be plus 1 or it could be minus 1, correct? So we got one condition, let's mark this. Second condition, let's solve the, the y-intercept part, which is minus b by m equals to b. Now this equation is true uh, if m equals to minus 1, in that case, we get minus b over minus 1 equals to b. So that means it is true for any value of b, right? So that means b equals to b, correct? So in that case, it is true for any value of b, right? So if m is minus 1, then there could be many lines. So that gives you infinite lines. Now let's consider the condition when m is plus 1. So if m is equals to plus 1, then we get minus b over 1 equals to b. And that means that b has to be equal to 0. So this is only true for b equals to 0. So the only line for which this is true is y equals to x where m is 1 and b is 0. Is that clear to you? Right? So, the invariant lines of, of the transformations represented by the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0 could be, let me use this small space to, to show the result. So, when we are saying the transformation is 0, 1, 1, 0, we're actually reflecting it on the line, which is this line. So the line which is invariant with the slope of 1 is y equals to x. That means the line which is diagonal. That is one line. And the other lines where the slope is negative 1, b equals to b, here we have the slope of negative 1. So let me write down the general equation of this line, which will be of the form y equals to minus x plus b. Right? So that is what it gives. So shorter space, I'm just using this. That means all the lines which are perpendicular to this particular line. So all the lines going like this will be invariant lines does make sense to you. Perfect. So we have infinite lines which have a slope of minus 1. They all are invariant since you can see that the points will be reflected on the line itself. Since the points are in reflected on the line itself, these lines are with points changing position. However, the line is invariant. The other line, which is y equals to x, is invariant because the points are also invariant. Do you see that? So we have invariant points, invariant line, 
In this case, the points are changing their position. However, the line is invariant. So I hope this concept is absolutely clear with the help of this example. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.